hazardous materials can be defined as any substance that can cause injury. And whether we like it or not, we're surrounded by them. The gasoline that you put in your car, the chemicals that you use to clean your bathroom, even the lawn care products that you use, all can cause injury. When you add in the chemicals used for industry, the total quantity of hazardous materials in this county can be very large. As long as these chemicals remain in their containers, we hardly notice them. And so, every day, an unknown quantity of hazardous materials are stored or pass unnoticed through our community, on trains, trucks, and in pipelines beneath our feet. But what happens when these containers fail? In Whatcom County, we call the Specialized Emergency Response Program. This is a very unique joint venture for both fire departments, industry, and law enforcement. This provides for both funding and expert personnel from a wide variety of disciplines. To get an idea of how the system operates, let's look at a federal hazmat terrorist response exercise held at Birch Bay earlier this year. When the SERP team arrives, they're faced with a large number of victims covered with an unknown chemical. A special decontamination tent is set up to clean patients before they're removed from the scene. The goal is to provide care without spreading toxic chemicals to the rest of the community, particularly the hospital. While the hazmat entry team puts on their protective suits, the bomb robot is sent into the hot zone to gather information about victims and the source of contamination. Those victims who are able to walk are encouraged to go to the front of the decon tent and change out of their contaminated clothing. This group will be washed down before further treatment is started. These walking wounded patients are now ready to be taken to a safe location for medical treatment, triage, and eventual transport to the hospital. Meanwhile, the primary and backup entry teams prepare their communication and respiratory gear. Okay, what we understand we're dealing with is a uh, material called uh, methyl isocyanate. No teams are allowed into the hot zone until a full briefing is complete. After a final check, the entry team is sealed into their suits. Once inside the hot zone, they begin to assess the scene and use their instruments to determine the chemicals that are present. This information is relayed to the incident commander. They now begin to assess injured patients and move them to the decon tent. The clothing is removed and the patient is washed off while rolling down the tent. Even the initial entry team has to be scrubbed off before leaving the hot zone. In an incident of this size, local resources are quickly overwhelmed, so military assets are brought in. Ground crews set up additional treatment areas so that medical teams can be brought closer to the scene. I want not just what I'm bringing at ground level, but I want eyes on up high. The Marine Corps Chemical Biological Incident Response Force prepares to send their troops into the hot zone. This allows the area to be thoroughly searched. More patients can now be found and brought to the decon tent more efficiently. While it is helpful to practice emergency skills regularly, the greatest benefit of these exercises is the development of interagency cooperation at the operational level, command level, and leadership level. That spirit of interagency cooperation is at the heart of Whatcom County's SERP team. Working relationships built in this group benefit everyone as they return to their regular duties in fire, industry, or law enforcement agencies. You never know when you're going to find yourself in the middle of a hazardous materials emergency. If that happens, rest assured, your Whatcom County SERP team stands ready to help you. Uh, okay, um, we're all done now. Um, can somebody help me get out of here? Uh, hello? Are my feet supposed to be burning? Mm -hmm.